Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video I will discuss with you some confused word pairs that unfortunately a lot of people misunderstand and use in the wrong way. This video will be especially helpful for you if you prepare for some English exams or just want to be more confident in your English and understand everything you read in English. So, if you're interested in that topic, continue watching this video. So, the first word pair that a lot of people misunderstand is the difference between comprised of and composed of. Both of these phrases describe what something is made up of, but they are not interchangeable. Comprised of means consists of something. So, for example, the admission is comprised of six members. Composed of means formed of, made up of. So, for example, the cake is composed of flour, eggs, and sugar. It is made of these three ingredients. So, remember, comprised of, composed of. They are different. The next word pair is continual versus continuous. Continual describes something that is happening repeatedly, but with breaks in between, while continuous describes something that is happening without any interruptions. So, for example, the construction noise was continual throughout the day. It means that there were multiple instances of the construction noise but with breaks in between. On the other hand, the rain was continuous all night. It means that it rained without any breaks, any interruptions. Moving on to illicit and illicit. Illicit means to get or produce something, such as information or response. The teacher tried to elicit a response from the student. It means that the teacher tried to get the response from the student. Illicit is forbidden and illegal. So, for example, the drug dealer was arrested for selling illicit drugs. It means that the drugs were illicit and illegal. Next pair includes imply and infer. Though those words are often used interchangeably, they are different. Imply means to suggest something while infer means to deduce or conclude something based on specific evidences. So, for example, if someone says, I feel tired today, you may infer that the person didn't get enough sleep at night. On the other hand, if someone says, I feel not very well, they may imply that uh, they are sick. So, imply and infer are completely different words. Next up, among and between. We use these words to describe relationships between things or people. We use between when we describe relationships between two people. So, for example, the conversation between John and Tom. And we use among when there are more than two people or things. So, for example, the conversation among the group of people. Moving on to beside and besides. Beside means next to, alongside. So, for example, if I said that I sat beside my friend, it means that I'm physically sitting next to my friend. Well, besides means in addition to, apart from. So, for instance, besides popcorn, we bought sweets. So, in addition to popcorn, we bought something else. Now, let's take a look at complement and complement. So, the pronunciation is the same, but the words are different. So, complement means to enhance or complete something, while complement, another word, means to praise something or someone or express your admiration for someone or something. The red shoes complemented the dress perfectly, meaning that they two looked amazingly together. My boss complimented me on my presentation. It means that he uh, praised my presentation. Moving on to conscience and conscious. So, conscience is your moral understanding of right and wrong. And conscious refers to being a war or awake. So, for example, my conscience told me the right thing to do. It means that your sense of right and wrong told you what to do. And on the other hand, 
I'm conscious of the fact that I need to prepare for that exam. It means that I'm aware of the fact that I need to prepare for the exam. Now let's talk about sight, sight and sight. Yeah, the pronunciation is the same. Meanings are different. So sight means to quote or reference something. Sight refers to the location or specific place. Sight refers to the ability to see. For example, the article cited specific resources that would support its argument. The construction site was closed due to the safety concerns. The view from the top of the mountain was a breathtaking sight. So you see, those words are completely different. Next up, diffuse and diffuse. So diffuse means to lessen the um, intensity or danger of the situation while diffuse means to spread something. For example, the police were able to diffuse the tense situation and the sense of flowers uh, was diffused throughout the room. Moving on to disinterested and uninterested. Those words are often used interchangeably, but they are exceedingly different. Disinterested means unbiased, impartial, while uninterested means lack an interest in something. So the judge must be disinterested in the outcome of the trial, right? And the children were uninterested in history lessons, for example. Now let's talk about insure and insure, right? The pronunciation is the same, but the difference in the meanings of these words. So insure is used when we talk about insurance of our health or car, right? For example, you need to insure your car. On the other hand, insure means to guarantee something. For example, you might insure that your car has enough gas to reach the destination. Next, we have elude and elude. These words can be easily mixed up. But here's their difference. Allude means to make an indirect reference to something. For example, if you say I alluded to that earlier, you are referencing something indirectly. On the other hand, elude means to avoid or escape something. If you say the suspect eluded the police, you mean that the suspect avoided the police or even escaped the police. Moving on to my favorite pair, immigrate and emigrate. Those words have the opposite meaning. Emigrate means to leave someone's country, to live permanently in another, while immigrate means to come to that specific country to live there permanently. So emigrate out of the country, immigrate into the country. So if you were born in France and moved to Canada, you emigrated from France and immigrated to Canada. Lastly, we have principle and principle. Again, the pronunciation is the same, but the words are different. So, principle refers to a person who is in the position of authority. So, for example, school principal. And principle uh, is the fundamental truth or belief, like the principle of equality. Okay, that was everything for today. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope that this video was useful for you because, to be honest, when I started to write the script for this video, I found some new words for myself as well. So, let's feel more confident in our English skills and see you in the next video. Bye-bye!